Hey you, in this episode, I'm gonna show you how I got this ridiculously awesome Star Trail image with the help of my friend Scott. In a previous episode, I built my father-in-law a backlit picture frame for his birthday with a Star Trail image from one of his favorite places in the world. The original pictures were taken with a DSLR camera and then given to my friend Scott, who makes images look awesome every day. There's a link in the description to his website. Before Scott did what he does so well, I took pictures on a cloudless and relatively moonless night with my camera set to bulb mode, the ISO set to 800, white balance set to tungsten, the intervalometer long exposure set to 30 seconds with a one second interval, then enclosed in a plastic bag for protection, a battery grip so pictures can be taken throughout the night, and everything was attached to a sturdy tripod that had been leveled. Image quality was set to raw, Focus on the wide angle lens was set to manual and then moved close to infinity. After a test shot, I zoomed in on the image to make sure the stars were in focus. Finally, a hand warmer was wrapped around the lens to prevent fogging. Then I had to take pictures through the night. If you've missed any of those details, they'll be down in the description along with affiliate links to all the gear. After that, Scott took it from there. We're gonna go to file script, load files into a stack, browse, go to my files folder, just do that, say open, so this is the last one, I did I think three or four other segments here, I'll just say okay, and so then I can pull those five files together into one layered file and I'll have the ability to turn on and off certain things. Go ahead and select everything and turn the blend mode to lighten and you have your star trail. And this one's pretty bright, but when we lay it over the other ones, we'll be able to adjust that too. Plus, I think I'm gonna use a different file completely for the foreground and maybe even another file completely for the sky. So I go ahead and just flatten these now that I have them. So now that we have that, we're going to bring in the other files. Open those. Now these are just the different segments I was telling you about. And so now if we just bring these on the top, star one, star two with the boat, star three, and star four. Now we've got all of them in five layers and a lot more just segments. And so now I can turn those to light. Mm. So I think I want to do redo the fifth one and grab less of the light images. So let's throw this one out. And turn these back on. Now I can select everything, turn it to light. And Yes, that's a much better basis. Flatten that, put them all to lighten, and boom, now we've got this. Which is pretty cool. And now we're gonna work from this. So, here's another great thing. We've got the boat separated out, but when I remove it, I get spots in my trails. Well, I don't want spots in my trails, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the boat clicked but now I'm gonna create a mask. And so now I'm, I've got a mask um, and the white reveals everything so the mask isn't doing anything. But now I can grab a brush and I can paint on my mask with black. And what that'll allow me to do is just mask out this part of that layer, which has the boat. So now I can get rid of the boat on this layer up to here and that gives me my trail still fully intact but masking out the boat but we have with the boat and without the boat and so i can turn those masks on and off um to put the boat back if i'd like if i so choose now what we want to do is try to get some detail down in this area because it's completely black so we're going to go back into the bridge and this is from the same folder that all of the star trails were shot in. Dave's setting up his camera and I think I really like this image with the wave breaking and just seeing some of the shore and that 
So we're just gonna open that image and bring it over top. And now we're going to put a mask on it that hides all of it. So black hides. And then what I'm gonna do is paint in, paint that back in where I want to see the shoreline. And I'll just paint it all in so you can see what I'm doing. So now I've painted white on the mask, which shows me what's underneath the mask. And it's this image that I dropped in that I want to merge in here to get some detail. Switch to black and go ahead and bring back in all of the sky. We still don't have any detail in our trees, but we're going to get that from another image. I really like that. This is obviously too bright. We're going to adjust the light a little bit later. I think this is looking good. Now we're going to try to find something with details in here. So I'm going to go down to the end where it was still recording long exposures. And we've got some of these that are really bright with details in the trees. And I'm just going to pick one that I feel like has pretty good amount of detail right here. So again, I'm going to mask this with black so I don't see any of it. And I'm going to zoom into those tree areas and I'm going to paint with white to bring my detail of my trees in. Oh, there you go. Looks amazing. Wow. We're done. <laughs> And what I'm going to do is lower the opacity on this file. And I'm going to put the blend mode to lighten. And now I'm going to adjust my mask a little bit more. And now I'm actually going to do a selected mask and bring this in to do some edge figuring it. it's gonna try to go in to some of these edges as best it can so photoshop does a pretty good job figuring that out um, since i had the really white bright sky and the trees that are you know got a lot more contrast and so now we have a decent strip out there it's obviously too bright but we have something we can work with and so we can now just lower the opacity a little bit. I'm liking some of this and uh, some of it needs a lot of work. The trees definitely need to be darker and so does this shore. So now we've got a nice base composition that I think we can work with. So I'm going to stop recording and I'm gonna go in here and, and tweak a bunch of this stuff and then I'll come back and show you what I did. So on this bottom part, I've added a curve adjustment that kind of brings it down. And then on the tree line, I've added several different adjustments here. Levels adjustment, bringing that down. And the color overlay of blue, like a blue color. Then selective color, which brings some of those highlights back through. I thought this looked like a much better composition. Uh, it looks more natural. And I added it's just a blend to blend the tree line in with the sky a little bit better. And then I've done a couple things to enhance a little bit of the sunset. Then an overall sunset or sunrise, whichever it is, bleeding into the water. And then I went back and added some hue and saturation into the sky. And then I did a multiply image to give it a little bit more boost up in the star trails. I'm pretty happy with this result. I think we're getting <clears throat> a lot of good color in these star trails. Um, some reds, and some yellows, and some blues, and some whites. And then I found another one that I like the clouds in. So I love the clouds in this one. And what I'm gonna try to do now is just bring that forward into the main composite. First thing is these don't line up. 
so I need to lower the opacity to about 50% so I can kind of see both images and then move this one into place. So I'm looking at horizon lines and the camera's tilted a little bit differently here, but this is, this is close. So what I'm gonna do is just transform it to match a little bit better the horizon line that's here. I'll go ahead and lock that in. So now I need to blend it so that you don't see the sky part, just the clouds. All right, uh, I think that's kind of nice.